Okay, so now we come up to the boost converter with parasitics. The nice thing about the video, if I'm going too fast for some people, is they can always review it over and over again. So that's the nice thing about the YouTube. <laughs> so, and I want to cover materials because I have a lot of materials to cover, and this is only covering one of the books, which I have uh, several of them. And, um, and I want to go through this material nicely so we can get to some AC models and close the loop and do ACs and do some loop gain analysis and do some uh, queuing of filters and get into some fancy stuff, which is kind of cool. So the next step is let's draw out parasitics, V sub G. So what parasitics are there? Well, I'm going to put the inductor and then I'm going to put the winding resistance of the inductor. And then I'm going to put, of course, here's the switch. And this is not ideal now. And this is going to have an RDS on when the switch is on. Then I'm going to put the diode, but I'm going to actually add the R. I can call this RZ, or I'll just call it R diode D. Sometimes I use RZ for Zener. Uh, if I use a Zener, what if I use, you're going to use a regular diode, of course, or a Shockey diode. And this is going to be the output here capacitor and the resistor okay so again what's how do you start direction of flow direction of flow is always power from the generator you're going to see the currents going to flow on when the switch is on when the switch is on that is d t that's the control that's when it's on when it's d t and when it's off, it's D prime T. And therefore, you can see the direction of the current. So immediately plus minus, that's the voltage across L. Immediately in the resistor, uh, winding resistance of the inductor is plus minus. And the RDS on is going to be plus minus. That's for, again, DT. For D prime T, the switch is open. And the current flows for D prime T in this direction now. So you see it flows in this direction, so it produces plus minus, it produces plus minus on the diode, and it produces plus minus on the output voltage. And there you have it. Now we have all our directions. All we need is two circuits. Because for the time on, I like to individual, and for the time off, just like we did before, for DT and for D prime T. It's very good to keep a systematic thing, especially when we deal with discontinuous conductor current. That means the inductor current here dries out and goes to zero. And in that case, you're going to have three stages, uh, a DT and a D2T, and then the final stage where the inductor current goes to zero, which is actually 1 minus D plus a D2. Okay, so getting back to this, we can draw the uh, separate equations. We could see we have a V sub G, and we have uh, we have the inductor, and we have the winding resistance of the inductor, and we have the RDS on, and that's the current I that's flowing into the inductor. Okay. We can see plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. Now, what's our output section there? Remember, the dial's reverse biased, so we just have the capacitor. And in this case, you notice there's no help from the inductor, which means in the, in the buck converter, there was always the inductor present all the time. But here, what's supplying this load current is just the capacitor, which is going to tell you in high current applications where if I have, um, you know, 10, 20, 30 amps, that means that during this time, for the time on DT, the capacitor must supply that full load current. Okay? Now let's separate, and for the D prime T period, what does the circuit look like? Well, we have a V sub G, we have the inductor, we have RW, 
and we have RD, so we're going to have the RW, we're going to have the, resist of the resistance of the diode, we're going to have the diode, we're going to have the capacitor, and we're going to have the resistance. Same polarity, current still goes here. Please keep the polarity the same. And that's your VD. And that's your V. So all we're going to do is again, what's LDIDT, what's EDVT? You know, I want to keep it monotonous, always the same thing. Don't change stuff. So I don't care about the T, remember, so all I care about is what is the voltage? Well, this is LDIDT right here for right now. And it's equal to what? VG, this up, minus what? The drop, this drop is going to be what? VG minus this, minus this drop. So it's VG minus what? The current I flowing times RW minus I times RDS on. That simple. What is this? LDIDT during the time off. Well, this is going to be equal to what? This is going to be equal to the voltage that's across there, VL, and it's this generator minus this voltage here, minus the, which is uh, the voltage across the RD, uh, RW, minus the voltage across RD, minus the voltage across VD, the diode, minus the voltage across V out. So that's just VG minus I RW minus I R D uh, minus V D okay, minus V okay so let's rewrite this because it looks like it's to the edge of the paper so this is L D I D T is V G minus I R W minus I R D minus V D minus V so what have we been doing a volt second balance which means that I of 0 is going to be I of T which is steady state and this term is going to go to 0 and all I have to do is carry out the DT on that side and all I have to do is multiply this by D multiply this by D prime set it to 0 and bingo I have your volt second balance so I just take D, V, G minus I, R, W minus I, R, D, S on plus D prime times this voltage, V, G minus I, R, W minus I, R, D minus V, D minus V. And I set this to what? Zero. Zero. That's the volt, volt second. Of course, if I multiply both sides by T, that will turn into DT, which is the time on, which is the second. Volt second. Volt second. Balance. Okay. When we solve this, now, we have one more thing we need to consider. We need to determine what that I is and how it relates to the output current, okay? When we have the boost converter, you know, let's just draw it without the parasitic for a moment. The parasitics won't matter because we have the parasitics in the equation. We just need to determine this I. That I is the inductor current, it's not the output current, okay? So what is going to be the output current? Well, the output current is this current that goes here, this current. That's the output current, the current that goes into the load. Okay? Well, what is this current if I stick on a current probe right in here? What is that current? That current only comes during the D prime period. Remember, the, the current I flows here during the D prime T period. So this waveform is going to look like zero current during DT and then jump up to some value of I 
that's the I here, that's where it gets the I from, during the D prime T period. Okay, I'm not going to put the slope in later, I'll put the slope in. It's a downward slope here. But for right now, we're going to treat it as a square wave. Uh, so in reality here is what is this? Well, what is this current? This current is the average current. It better be the average current because if it were any pulsating current, uh, the ripple current that jumps up and down, then the output voltage would jump up and down. And we don't want that. And therefore, the capacitor should take the ripple current, that delta I current, and this should take the I average current, which I call the low current I average. Uh, and that should be the average of this value. What's the average of this value? Well, it's just base times height over the total time. So the average of that current is nothing more than d prime times i. Okay? And you know that that's equal to what? Well, it's a constant voltage. It's V over R. So we know that now I is just simply 1 over D prime V over R. So now we have the value of I that we plug in to the equation above. Remember the VG, uh, uh, we plug it into the equation for I R W minus, uh, you know, this is minus, this is I R D, et cetera, et cetera. So all, everywhere we see I now, we can plug this value in 1 over D prime, V over V R. And again, in my book, I go over the details step by step, and I'm just going to give you, because it's all algebra, I'm just going to give you the answer when you plug that in and solve. It's V over V sub G is going to be 1 over D prime times, I know books put this into the, into the whole equation. I don't like doing that. I like to know this is ideal and the rest is efficiency. So this becomes 1 minus D prime, a little different, not D prime over D, V sub G when you solve, divided by 1 plus RW plus D R D S on plus D prime R D uh, over D prime squared R. This is the efficiency. So V over V sub G is nothing other than the ideal times the efficiency. That's the efficiency for the boost. Okay, so you can kind of see this is pretty cool in the sense that, again, if we look at this, this makes sense because the current flows through this RDS arm only during DT. And the current flows in this portion, this here, during, uh, that would of course be the resistance RD, and the RDS on would be here, flows during D prime T period, flows through here. Now when does this flow? It always flows through here. So when I see the winding resistance, I see this during DT and during D prime T. Hence, that's why it's just that. Because if I see it during D and D prime, D plus D prime is one, okay? So now we have our boost converter with parasitics. And again, uh, I make plots uh, in, my, in my book of basically the plots of efficiency versus duty cycle uh, for this equation, and also the output over the input vo uh, voltage versus duty cycle. And those plots you can just make in any one of your circuits by substituting these equations in. And you get the various plot, plots for different values of RDSR, different values for RD, and different values for here. Now note again, let's make the parasitics equal to zero. That means this is zero, so this whole thing becomes zero, and this is a one. Now what's this? This is zero, no RDSR, this is ideal. 
RDSR, uh, sorry, I'll be your winding resistance of the inductor would be zero. RDSR would be zero, again, ideal switch. And RD, the diode resistance, will be zero. So zero, 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 zero on the top. This whole thing is zero, and this is one. So you got one over one, and it becomes just one over D prime, which makes that efficiency n, of course, equal to one, and that means that's the ideal, one over D prime, just as we had it before, and this is the ideal component, and this is the efficiency component.